100 millisecond, milliseconds. What it means is, let's say the compressor tripped. The signal will go to the, let's say DCS or whatever, of the, or the unit control panel in let's say 100 milliseconds, milliseconds. Then again from the anti-surge controller, by the time it sends the signal telling the anti-surge valve to open, it can take another 100 milliseconds. Now I met one person from, I think I'm trying to remember, um, I forgot the name, Mr. Thakur, I think, Thakur or Thakur, I forgot his name. On your uh, session, Manoj Thakur. Manoj Thakur. He was telling me that the instrumentation they have, the scan time was even 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So by the time the signal goes here and again reaches to this, it should be less than 100 milli milliseconds. So if, let's say if the valve is about, let's say, 12 inch or 14 inch and it opens in two seconds. So in your simulation, you have to enter it as total time is two plus. 0.1 plus 0.1, uh, that is 2.2 seconds mm -hmm. when you model it. So the actual op actuator opening, the signal, the response time should be uh, less than 100 meters, 100 milliseconds. Next, when you have vapors flowing across the anti-surge valve, because there's a drop in pressure, it creates noise. And we do not want the noise to be uh, around 85 decibels is acceptable, but should not be more than 110 decibels. Then the, the valve opening characteristics traditionally have been linear. So if I plot a graph between percentage CV and percentage travel, that is the stem travel, linear is traditionally used by most manufacturers. Whereas some manufacturers, what they do, they take a bit of this equal percentage and linear percentage and they try to let so the, some part is equal percentage, and after that it becomes linear. So this is one way of doing it. Um, G offers these kind of mixed uh, type of um, this thing, what you call um, valve characteristics. We don't use quick opening valves because it has poor throttling characteristics. Like a pressure cooker, you know, the valve goes tap 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 tap. It 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 tends to chatter on the pressure on the not on the pressure. The valve tends to chatter quite a lot. So when it opens, it opens pretty fast. But when it, but then if it has to keep opening and closing to control the, 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 the flow rate through the anti-surge line, you're going to have regulatory, regulation, regulatory issues. The valve doesn't open and close the, the way you want it to. So linear is used quite a lot. In reality, equal percentage plus linear a combination, some of the manufacturers offer. Now, and then of course the next set of slides are anyway, oh man. Okay, then uh, wait, uh, I'll quickly. So you can have different types of recycle arrangements. One is the basic recycle arrangement. There is no cooler. It can be used for low pressure ratios. The second one is the standard that what I've been showing above. You have a suction scrubber, a discharge cooler. Anti-surge takeoff has to be before this final check valve back to the suction. The difference between this and this is that you can cool the gas, it, but you have to have additional piping. Cost goes up because of the cooler. In this case, pre-cooling and post-cooling, you can put, you can put, um, you can put um, a cooler in the suction also, but by putting a cooler on the suction, what happens is you're cooling the gas. If you cool the gas, the amount of power required to uh, so let's say you have a gas compressor where the motor is already, it's already there. Then for some reason, you're not able to change the parameters. Then what you can do is you can cool the gas before compressing it. So that way you don't have to, you don't have to, what do you call the, 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 the driver would be sufficient to, 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 to cater to the process requirements. So if you have gas, which is entering at 30 degrees Celsius, then what you can do is you can put a cooler here and try to reduce it to, let's say, 20 or 25, depending on the face envelope, as long as there is no condensation. And you can uh, operate the, the, uh, the, the, the gas compressor, but there's a problem. You, because of this, uh, because you have one more cooler apart from this one, it is going to cost you more. Let's say I took off the anti-search takeoff point from here. Then what happens is you're increasing the discharge side volume. So your, and if your anti-search controller is not it's too sluggish to, 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 to transport all this volume back to the suction, then it's a problem again. So we shift it closer. We shift it closer to the, to the um, suction side by putting a cooler. But the advantage with this method 
is that you can achieve 100% recycle. Whereas in this method, if you recycle, what happens is this, this with every recycle, uh, with every cycle, what happens is the temperature will go on increasing. And you will, in reality, you will have a TAHH, an alarm, high, high uh, temperature alarm. So when the high, high TAHH is breached, what happens is that the compressor will trip. So this method, you can recycle only for some time. In this method, again, it's the same problem, but if you put it here and you have uh, uh, an anti surge control that is sufficient to withstand, provided this, this, this line after the cooler to here, you can go on recycling for much longer periods. Then you can, can also have a cooler recycle. There's no, I mean, they, that, that is the same as this. These two are similar, except that you're putting a cooler on the recycle line. With this, you can recycle it a little longer than this, but it'll cost more because of an additional cooler. Then you have the hot gas arrangement, the regular uh, cold recycle line, and then you have a hot recycle line. The hot recycle line, it is a better option to put it before the suction scrubber, not like, not like this, not like this, because this is what I have shown in, 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 in those slides. But this is a better option because let's say there is any, uh, for some reason you have any condensation happening, then at least you can prevent, you can capture all those liquids from entering into the gas compressor. A liquid at very high velocities inside a gas compressor behaves like a solid and it can erode the metal plate. We don't want that to happen. Then the other way you can do it is parallel arrangement. So this is an ASV. The first one is an ASV, whereas this is a quick opening valve. Quick opening valve is on-off type and this valve is, um, is regulatory in nature. So you can have good modulation during this thing, because the, because the quick opening valve is opening so fast, at least you will be able to quickly, uh, relatively, in a quick, in a, relatively, to, quickly, you can move the operating point away from the suction line. But then you also have series. So if you have two compressors in series, uh, and one compressor is uh, small, the other one is larger. For the larger one, you put its own dedicated um, recycle loop, and then put an overall equalization. Uh, an overall an, o, an overall recycle loop. Now let's say both the gas compressors are um, of equal size, then what you do is you put their own dedicated uh, recycle loops and an overall recycle loop, you can do that. Now there is, the point is there is no um, specific thing, this is the best or that is the best, it's not like that. Depending on your compressor maps, depending on your process conditions, you have to choose what is the best way of um, working out your, uh, this thing, you can work out almost anything. I mean, anything means uh, like this, you have to keep, you have to understand which is the best um, arrangement for a given application. And for that, it depends on the performance curves as well as the process conditions that are at hand. Saji, so, we'll move to the, to the- Yes. I see, sir. So to recap, yeah. One second, sir, I'll just have a glass of water. Oh. All right, so this is your file. Ah, okay, yeah, so, so this is a case where I think it, this is a normal shutdown. So when you build a compressor model, the, the kind of information that you need to have is one, you need to have your equipment volumes. That is where you, because remember in HISIS, what you're actually, what HISIS is doing is that it is only a thermodynamic solver. It is only interested in the volumes. You can put pipes and which it will do the hydraulics, but for the dynamic simulation analysis, it's the volumes which really matter finally. So when you give your diameter height, when you do your equipment sizing, line sizing and all that, the value that is actually going into the simulation 
is this the volume so in this case it's 28.67 meter cube that 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 that's um, it's that so that in this case it's the volume for coolers what we do is the you not only give where is it uh, you not only give the cooler volume after you size an air cooler you put the volume here the the, the vol that is the volume of the tubes that is pi by 4 d square l the diameter of the inner diameter of the tube and length of the tube multiplied by the number of the tube number of tubes you can put that volume here but you must also give what is called a k value k means is a loss coefficient it is basically the dynamic head the kv square by 2g value kv square by 2g if you convert it to mass flow rate terms kv ah, mass flow rate terms it is nothing but mass mass flow rate divided by square root of pressure drop into density what does this mean what this means is that in steady state when you are doing a steady state you are giving the pressure drop so let's say cooler has 0.5 bar pressure drop in high steady state you will open the cooler and you will say 